capable of reading more into a person's feelings from like words than actually a drawing. So no illustrations. Um, seven. What book did you love while What book did you love while reading, but discovered it discovered later it wasn't quality writing? Example: I read Twilight before I read Harry Potter. And thought the writing was amazing, but read HP and now think Twilight is a little bit of a joke. So that's what the person that wrote then this tag thought about. So yeah. Um, number seven. That's number seven, and that was the, what the person wrote. That's not what I wrote about Harry Potter Twilight. I was just reading all what the person said in the question. Um, oddly, and this is my answer. Oddly, the books that come to mind is... I need to tell y'all like when I'm done with reading the answer, but this is my an or question. Or done reading the question. But this is my answer, and the rest of them I read the illustrations. It's basically the longest, longer one that I read was my illustration. Was my, what I, my answer, but this one was longer than my answer, so... Uh, or maybe my answer was longer, but I'm going to read the so I can read y'all the question and the answer. So this is my answer. Oddly, the book that comes to mind, the, oddly, the books that come to mind is A Thousand Tomorrows and Just Beyond the Clouds by Karen Kingsbury. The books that often brought a tear, and I love Thousand Tomorrow by Karen, and I loved A Thousand Tomorrows by Karen Kingsbury in the beginning, but was sad by the fact that she didn't express the reality of a CF lung transplant. Spoiler! But the majority of lung transplant people don't have only a life of three years after the transplant. I think she improved that and realized her mistake and brush of wings it, though. So, if you guys are going to read Thousand Tomorrows, you're probably not going to read this after you watch this video. But I have to kind of, I have to kind of explain. I have to give, I have to give a spoiler. I will edit this out, but I literally have to give it without because it's part of my answer, so I have to give it. But in the book, the character got a lung transplant, and she only lived three years. And in reality, I don't think that's naturally the case. Um, 10 to 15 years, 10 years after a transplant, but I don't think that it's the reality that a person would only live three years after a lung transplant. That's just my opinion. I don't know if, it, I'm sorry if it's like I'm being, being wrong, but... I mean, it can happen. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm just saying it's more likely that I don't think a person... It's not that likely that a person would die three years after a lung transplant. That's just my opinion. Um, but it can happen. Number eight. Do you have any funny stories involving books from your childhood? Oh, and also to finish that question, number seven, was um, Brush of Wings. She kind of fixed that in the sense that a person had a heart problem, and I won't give that one away. And she kind of fixed it a little bit better. So, yeah. Um... But I love Karen Kingsbury. That was just a thing that I thought probably needed improvement in the book. That I thought that the lifespan of a person with CF after a long transplant was kind of exaggerated in that. So, anyway, number eight. Do you have any funny stories involving books from your childhood? Please share. Uh, yes, I do. This is the first thing that came to mind. I didn't really have to think about this one. Yes, yeah, Stuart Little, Stuart Little Two movie picture book storybook. My mom, my mom read it to me so much she had memorized it and she, once she memorized it, I used to make her read it to me and she would try to fall asleep while doing it I kept waking her up until she finished and so she'd be like I'd be like she'd be like Margo and I'd be like and she'd be like damn it and it was just so I would I would wake her up and make her finish the story and I wouldn't let her go to sleep I know that's bad of me but that was a little funny story that I had I don't think the person that I got this tag from actually I don't think it was the creator of the tag but I don't think the person that I got this tag from actually had a good answer about in childhood, but I do. And it was Stuart Little. Um, what is the thinnest book on your bookshelf? And I have those two right here. Thinnest book on my bookshelf. I have those right here. And they're both like Christian books. Um, what is the thinnest book on your bookshelf? Life in Six Words. And I honestly don't know who wrote this. I just know it's this. So, yeah. And then what? And then what is the thickest uh, book on your shelf? It is this prayers um, for children, and it's actually I think from it says illustrated by Elise, Elise Eloise Walken. Selections from My Little Golden Book about God, God written by Jane Warner Watson. So yeah, I think that's the thickest book and the thinnest book on my shelf. Um. So, yeah. 11. Do you write as well as read? Do you see yourself being... Do you see yourself in the future as being an author? 11. 
that's the question 11 do you see, do you write as well as read do you see yourself in the future as being an author I haven't read I haven't I haven't written a, I have written a few stories I put haven't I don't know why exactly the truest answer honest answer is I have I have written a few stories on my path but I find it easier to write a fan fiction because it already has a plot I don't really do good making up plots then I do myself making it up because I have a harder time with myself with making a plot and sticking to the characters and plot and sticking to a plot if I were to write a story on my own. I have hundreds of stories on notes on my electronic devices, but it failed to put them up because I feel I could do better. Um, so yes. I couldn't see myself as an author, but other people do, especially my psychiatrist. And others have always told me I should be an author. I feel I would be better as a co-author because I would probably add in details and go... If somebody could make up with a plot and then I could give details of what I wanted to and we could like collaborate, I think I would be better. Um, I feel like I would be better as a co-author, someone to give the plot, to give the plot myself, someone to give the plot and then myself the details. Would love to write a novel of both Karen Kingsbury. Feel we have those same writing ideas. So yes, I would love to write a novel of Karen Kingsbury because she has the same idea of drama and stuff that I feel like that I do. So yeah. I'd be better as a co-author, but maybe one day I'll be an author, so who knows. And if I ever write a book, then you know it's going to be splashed on this YouTube channel. So yeah. Anyway, I probably won't, but if I ever do, then I would do the probably publicity of it on this channel. Yeah. Unless, like, my publisher wanted to create a new channel. I don't know. Okay. Number 12. When did you get into reading? 12. I, 12. When did you get into reading? I always do. I always do the question first and the number next. 12. When did you get into reading? I've always loved reading, and I've I've went through phases. But my problem in school was always the in school was always the having a list of books for like AR or summer reading list, like accelerated reader. In third grade, I don't know if y'all had that, but in my district, we in my school district, we did. Um, or summer reading list. I'm very picky on the books I want to read, and hate being limited. So therefore, in elementary school, I disliked reading. But once I got in middle school, and and they mostly let you read what you wanted to, I enjoyed it. So in Middle school and high school, I felt like I had a little bit more of a leeway of, like, I could read what I wanted to. Um, there was a thing going in after elementary school that you had to read so many books, um, but you could read what you wanted to. So that was a little bit better. I just didn't like being timed there to read every day, but you could read what you wanted to. So, yeah. And, um, and I mostly, uh, I wanted, I wanted to, uh, but that's when I started to really enjoy books was around, like, middle school. And so... And in between the summer reading, I don't think they ever had you do really summer reading in middle school or high school. It wasn't really like, it was there, but it wasn't really like forced. And then like elementary school it was. So I'd probably have to say that I love, I'd probably say that I started loving reading. I've always loved reading and my mom's always like read and stuff. And I've always looked at picture books and stuff, <laughs> illustrated books when I was little. I've always had an idea about books, but I say I really got into it once I was in like, uh, middle school and high school. Uh, number 13. What is your favorite classic book? Even though I've never read it, not really into classic books, probably Charlotte's Web. So I'm not really into classic books. I've never read it, but I love Charlotte's Web. Love the storyline and easily saddened by the death of Charlotte. So yes. that was That's my answer for number 13. My favorite classical book was Charlotte's Web. Even though I've never read it, I'm in love with the movies. I'm especially in love with the um, like the real life version with Dakota Fanny. Number four, number fourteen. In school, what was your best subject? Language arts or English? Language arts. It was called in elementary and middle school, and in high school, English. It was called so. In elementary school, and middle school, it was called language arts, and in high school, it was called English. Yes, English was my best subject. I enjoyed it. I am always may an A or B average, maybe one or two C's in high school, because it was obviously harder. So, yeah. Number 15. If you were given a book as a present that had you had read before and hated, what would you do? Give it to a person who I know would enjoy it. And if somebody would give it to me, I would never be the type to say, Oh, I've already read that or I've hated that. I would just be like, Well, thank you. And then if I didn't really like it or wanted to read it, I would just, like, give it to somebody else. So, yeah. Number 16. What is a lesser known series that you know of that is similar to Harry Potter and the Hunger Games? That was 16. What is a lesser known series that you know of that's similar to Harry Potter or The Hunger Games? I don't think I have any except maybe Angels Walking, 
brush of wings where Mary Catherine had to survive in Africa with a deadly heart problem. I'm usually not into those type of novels. So, finally, I don't really have anything to relate to Harry Potter, wizardry, but Hunger Games, when Mary Catherine had to survive in Africa on a mission trip with a heart problem in one of Karen Kingsbury's books in Brush of Wings. So, yeah. Number 17. What is a bad habit you always do besides rambling when filming? Everybody rambles when they film, I think. And my nose, my nose always itches, for example. Um, number 18. What is your favorite word? Grace. Probably because it m makes a pretty name for a child and a pretty title for a place, movie, book, etc. And also because we're saved by God's grace. Number 19. Are you a nerd, dork, or dweeb? Or all of the above? Nerd. I don't know why, and this is my answer. Nerd. I don't know why I think it sounds better, less hurtful, if that makes any sense. I feel like people wouldn't be offended if you called them a nerd as they would a dork or a dweeb. That's just my opinion. So, yeah, I'm, I know I've been, not been really good about reading the answers or the question, uh, questions and the answers, but you guys have pretty much got it. And go look up the old book tag, the ultimate book tag, to find um, this book. But I'm pretty sure I've done pretty good on answering the questions. I mean, not answering the questions, but reading you guys the questions. Um, number 20. Vampires are fairies. And, um, I'd say fairies. Duh, they give you money, like tooth fairy money. And vampires creep me out. Never been into the whole werewolf, vampire, zombie craze. I've never been into it. Even when, like, Twilight was popular, I've never, I was never into it. Um, shapeshifters or angels. I had to actually look up what say shapeshifters were, and that was, like, iCloud. And, um, or angels. Why? Angels, they live with God and are sitting down to protect us. <laughs> Number 22, spirits or werewolves? Spirits, because most of the time spirits are kind. To me, most of the time it's either the Holy Spirit or a spirit of a loved one. Um, werewolves could be kind, I guess, but they creep me out. I like little doggies, like Sadie Marie by Sadie Marie, so. I'm not really, I mean, I like big dogs. I used to like really big dogs when I was little, and then I got, I like little dogs when I was older, but I have to say I would choose between spirits because I would rather a spirit I would want the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, to be after me rather than a werewolf. So, Or Spirit of a loved one to be after me rather than a werewolf. Um, after me in a good way, like not if I did something evil, obviously, but I wouldn't want evil spirits after me. But I'm a pretty, I'm, I'm, I say pretty good most of the time, so I'd probably want the Spirit of God or Spirit of a loved one to help me and follow me. So, yeah. Number 23. Zombies or vampires? Neither. Had to choose. Neither. But if I had to choose, I don't know. I don't know. A vamp, maybe vamp. Yeah, I'll reread this one. Zombies or vampires? Neither. Had to choose. If I had to choose, maybe vampires. I don't know because Bridget Mindler was one on wizards and turned to a bat, and bats don't completely creep me out. So that was my answer. 24. Love triangle or forbidden love. Love triangle because there's an option and those people can still see each other. And have an option to be together. Forbidden love saddens me because they can't see or be with each other by force or have, or have no option. So it's somebody keeping them together. Or like last night on um, Grey's Anatomy was a forbidden love. Where this these, this guy was getting ready to get a love, tra love transplant. <laughs> he was getting ready to get a lung transplant because he had CF. And his girlfriend also had CF. And if you don't know, CF people can't be together um, because of the whole bacteria issue. And so they told him said you're not getting these lungs if you don't break up with your girlfriend because you'll just make yourself sicker. So, that was a forbidden love. And forbidden love saddens me because they have no option of ever seeing each other. But a love triangle, they can kind of not, I don't want to say, they can kind of be, like, talk to each other and stuff like that. And there's a lot more questions raised where it's in, no, you can't see each other. If it's a love triangle, you're kind of back and forth and it has a good storyline to it. And so, yeah. In my opinion, like Zoe, Wade, and George, Travis, Bay, and Emmett. To me, that's what Travis, Bay, and Emmett to me were a love triangle because they were kind of together. Anyway, and finally, full on romance books or action packed with a few love scenes in it. Kind of both, but more full on romance because action is follow for me. And that is the end of the book tag, which is the ultimate book tag the book tag the ultimate book tag hope you guys enjoyed it and bye for now guys i'll have a video up 
I'll probably have a singing video up on Saturday and then my weekly normal vlog on Monday. So yeah, bye for now, guys.